Welcome back to a very special session of the Youth Action Challenge. As you can see, we're doing things differently given COVID-19 and all that. So we are here for the question and answer session. And with me, of course, we have our four judges. Very quickly, we've got Mr. Bradley, Mr. Edward Chia, Ms. Farah Sanwari and Ms. Jacqueline Poe. And our very first team for today's question and answer session, we have Team Spark the Next Job. So without further ado, I now hand over to the judges. Judges, over to you. Thank you so much for your pitch video. I, I think that it's really exciting. Just want to ask, can you share more about your program? In particular, how do you actually teach adaptability and resilience? Uh, I'd like to hear more of the, about the details of that program. So our program is an eight-week program. Uh, we aim to teach resilience in five different pillars. And one of them actually includes adaptability in general. So what we do is actually, we actually bring people through a, a masterclass series of the five different pillars. And then we actually kind of break them out into different um, smaller pairs where they actually hold each other accountable throughout the entire eight-week program itself. And in terms of adaptability itself, we actually focus on this thing called adaptive performance. So how do you specifically look at adaptability in the workplace itself, um, be it in terms of uh, adjusting to changes in the workplace, or it could be also external factors like, for example, if an unfortunate event happens that you happen to lose your job, can you actually bounce back from it as well? And because as young people, right, um, we actually face a lot of challenges along the way and a lot of different things are actually thrown at us. So um, we actually encourage our youth to kind of set career goals, mini career goals and mini milestones along the way. And whenever challenges come up, can they actually maneuver and adapt to it? And I think by achieving little wins and incremental wins, they can actually kind of develop up their adaptability portion. And also just to add on to what Kaining is saying, right? So we also, at the end of the program, during session eight, we have this sort of uh, a milestone showcase where the participants actually got a chance to sort of implement the actionable steps that were taught in the Spark framework being translated onto session eight, where they sort of like got to work on an action plan and achieve a career goal. Well, thanks. Um, super interesting and it really does fill a need. So how do you plan to sustain this? What's the sort of financial model um, going forward after this challenge period? So our initial strategy is to go to a B2C model where we want to uh, capture the mass market. And of course, uh, in the initial three ones, uh, we intend to roll out to uh, as many diverse participants as we can so that we can really test the, the rigor and, and the validity of our program. And also, it gives us the opportunity to refine our model along the way. So in fact, we do charge our participants an upfront fee for the whole eight-week program and also with regard to the external stakeholders that we're engaging, like the masterclass trainers, as well as the growth partners that will be helping the participants to coach uh, them throughout the way, uh, we'll be paying them a, a token fee. After the subsequent three runs, uh, we are actually thinking of uh, you know, increasing the, the price or the fee of our program so that we can uh, better sustain the model. So ultimately, we do see ourselves sustaining this whole program by ourselves. And uh, I think this, this grant that we're looking at will help us in terms of uh, helping us to, to set up the, the training capabilities uh, of our career coaches that we hope to uh, train up. Thank you very much, team. Spark the next job into our judges as well. This wraps up our very first question and answer session as we've done it online.